From Hollywood, it's time now for John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Don Vickers, Johnny. Hey, how would you like to go to California with me? Well, I'd like that fine, but do I have to work? If you want to eat while you're out Johnny, we've written a lot of insurance for Los Angeles contractor named Elliot Champion. Uh-huh. Last night, his latest project went up in smoke. An office building he completed two weeks ago. How much is the policy worth? Damage is over a half million dollars. I talked with our officer and inspector long distance. He had some interesting things to say. Like what? The file looks phony. I'll pack my things. John Lund in the transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Great Eastern Fire and Casualty, New York City. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Elliott Champion matter. Expense account item one, $38.87. Train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York, where I met Agent Don Vickers and we made arrangements to fly to California. Item two, $28 even, one raincoat. Item three, $199.15, transportation New York to Los Angeles. En route, Vickers filled me in on the details concerning Mr. Elliot Champion. I met him once, Johnny, when he was in New York last time. Uh Uh-huh. Vickers, I said to myself, look well on this man. He may be the last of his kind. How's that, Don? Well, Champion's 60 or better now, and he's been everything in his lifetime. Sailor, soldier, lawyer, financier, Lord knows what all. One of those birds who started with absolutely nothing. He talked fast, worked hard, and what he couldn't get one way, he managed to get another. All in all, he's done pretty well. I didn't like him, Johnny. Go on. Well, maybe I was just jealous of his aggressiveness, or maybe it's that I've heard stories of how he ran roughshod over big and little. No, well, it's about this office building. Yeah? Ives, the man who called me, has worked on several awesome cases for us. Said the fire was of a definite incendiary origin. Can he prove it? Yeah. Nothing fancy. Somebody poured a few gallons of gasoline over some leftover building materials in the elevator shaft and threw a match on it. Well, pretty effective. What else? Well, Champion's in financial trouble. The insurance would be better than the building. Ives will probably have more for us when we get there. He's been waking on it from the start. I feel like a patsy. Oh, how's that? Well, Norman Ives has always been the best arson man in the business, as I can remember. And you're no slouch. What am I doing in this? Protection, Johnny. If Champion fired that building down to collect the insurance, I want to know about it. Ives might find the answer, you might find it, or I might find it. But where Champion's involved, it won't be easy. We'll all have to work. Are you scared of this guy? Yeah. Nobody's ever beat him. Spence account item four. Seven dollars and a half. Incidentals upon arrival. Vickers and I checked in at the new Statler Hotel, grabbed a few hours sleep... And the next morning, drove out to the scene of the fire with Norman Ives, the arson expert. A watchman on duty had seen a man loitering in the vicinity of the building when he came to work at 6 o'clock. Three other people remember the same man. A druggist, a filling station man, and a newsboy. All of their descriptions were pretty close. Medium build, medium height, medium weight. Between 25 and 30. Uh, Well, that's helpful. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Now, the druggist and the man who ran the filling station could only supply the description, but the newsboy swears he saw this man sneak around the side of the building around 8 o'clock. The fire broke out about 8.30. Anybody see him leave? The newsboy says he saw him catch a bus on the corner right before the fire broke out. The bus driver on the line wasn't any help. The police have broken out every mug they can find in the arson files. Well, if the man with all the medium things about him is the man, this might not be so tough. No luck so far. I don't think they'll pick him up in the arson files, Dollar. It was an amateur job. I'll show you exactly how when we get there. What about the police lineup? Well, they've had three so far. One coming up tonight and one tomorrow. And I'd say that's a long chance, too. No professional, no firebug? There's a possibility, sure, but none of it seems right to me. A bug will plan it and perform it just like an expert. Then he'll stand around and watch it burn. Maybe he'll call somebody up and tell him how happy he is. But I don't think our boy is any bug. There's something else in it, or I miss my guess. Well, you're the specialist. 
Any ideas? Not a one. I talked to the men who had been working in the building that day. There was no gasoline stored in that basement when they left work at 4 o'clock. But somebody moved in at least five gallons of gas between 4 and 6 when the watchman came on. How he did it, where he got it, I don't know. But it's one thing we'll have to find out. The police have any leads? They're working as hard as they know how. It would take a long time to check every filling station and find out who bought a five-gallon can of gasoline. Yeah. We're up against something here, and I... Has, uh, has anybody talked to Champion? Not yet. All he knows is that the fire people are trying to discover how the blaze started. I thought it best to leave it that way until we get our bearings. Well, here we are. Sure looks like a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I'll show you how much of a mess it really is. We spent the rest of the day covering the ruins of the ten-story office building that had been gutted by flames two days before. Ives acquainted us with all of the necessary details on exactly how the fire had been started. That night, we sat in on the lineup at the police station while the four witnesses looked at some 60-odd suspects. There were no identifications. The next day, while Vickers and I was worked with the police, I went out to Elliot Champion's real estate office in Glendale. Expense account item five. Five dollars taxi fare, including tip. Remember that old saw about how a woman in love is always beautiful? Well, when I walked in, I had no idea Mildred Champion was in love and no idea that she was beautiful. Her sallow face, without makeup, framed in a wisp of never-set blonde hair, wasn't flattered by the shapeless black dress and low-heeled shoes that she was wearing. Certainly not the going idea of beauty. Nor did her conversation reveal anything to indicate love. Yes, may I help you? Uh, Mr. Elliot Champion, please. Uh, my name is Dollar. Dollar? D-O-L-L-A-R? Uh, he's not expecting me. Your business, Mr. Dollar? Great Eastern Fidelity. It's about the fire. Oh, just a moment, please. Well, what is it, Mildred? Uh, Mr. Dollar is here, Uncle Elliot. I don't want to see anybody today. I told you that, you idiot. He's from the insurance company. It's about the fire. Oh. Now, send him in. We're going out to lunch. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Dollar, straight ahead. He always like that? He's nice today. I see. Thanks, Mildred. Hmm? Well, that's your name, isn't it? Well, yes. Straight ahead. Dollar? Yes, Mr. Champion? Come on in. I'm not going to ask you to sit down. I know why you're here. You have insurance investigator written all over you. Well, in that case, we can get right down to business, Mr. Champion. We certainly can. Do they know what caused the fire yet? They do. Somebody poured gasoline on some rubbish in the basement. It was deliberate. I thought so. Why? Because Joseph Harrison is out of prison now, and he swore he'd get back at me. Who's Joseph Harrison? Harrison worked for me at one time. Discovered stealing money from me, and I prosecuted him. He was sent to prison for five years. He's the one. You seem pretty certain of that. Of course I'm certain of it. I know what enemies I have, what friends. There are some witnesses who've got to look at the man who we believe started the fire. What does Joseph Harrison look like? I don't remember. I hardly ever remember faces. But you remembered his threat. What I remembered was the small story in the newspapers last week that he was being released from prison. Well, we'll certainly look him up and have a talk with him. Now, that's very good of you, I'm sure. Now, look, this can be a difficult thing all the way around, or we can cooperate, Mr. Champion. I understand you people have been over to my bank looking into my personal affairs. I don't think I have to beat around the bush with you, Mr. Champion. There's a lot of money at stake here. We'll have to hold up your claim until we get all the facts. You'll pay that claim, Mr. Dollar. I didn't say we wouldn't. We'll have to be satisfied in all directions. Then satisfy yourself. Get Joseph Harrison. He burned down my building. A review of the trial and proceedings in which Joseph Harrison had been convicted of grand theft, his threats at the time of the trial, substantiated Champion's information. When two of the witnesses identified Harrison's mug picture, an APB went out. We worked with the police. When all the routine places had been covered, we branched out and went out after anybody. Uh, Who are you? My 
name's Dollar. Are you Mr. Angle? That's right. Insurance investigator, Mr. Angle. Trying to locate a former client of yours, Joseph Harrison. Oh, my goodness. I defended Joe over six years ago. Come in. I always fix my own dinner. Poached egg and half and half. Ulcers. Name's Dollar? Yeah. You want something? No, thanks. Do you mind if I finish? No, go right ahead. What, uh... What led you to me? Well, covering everybody. We're very anxious to get a hold of Harrison and talk to him. Well, I don't think I'm going to be much help, Dollar. What's it all about? He's been identified as the man who started a fire in the Elliott Champion building. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you, Mr. Angle? Truly sorry. Joe Harrison was a nice kid who got in a little trouble, is all. But a calendar job. Born with one war just finished, a depression on deck, and another war in the hole. Makes a difference in a man's life. The calendar got him. Everything was against him at the trial, too. Champion poured it on. He didn't have to, but he did. He could have let him off. Did you try to talk him into that? No, I didn't. Nobody talks Elliot Champion into anything. And besides, Joe would never admit taking the funds. He said he was framed. Well, he didn't have a prayer with all the evidence Champion had against him. Why, I read the trial notes. Yeah, and that's it. Joe pleaded not guilty in the face of everything, and he went up. I want him to make a guilty plea and go on the mercy of the court. It was his first offense. Well, he's out now, and as I said, it looks like he's trying to get even with Champion for prosecuting him. Oh, for a lousy ten grand. Has he gotten in touch with you? Oh, no. You have a right to you from prison? No. Do you have any idea where he'd be in town, Mr. Angle? No, I don't. Well, then I guess I'll leave you to your eggs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dollar. <laughs> if you find Joe, I'd like to know about it. Why, Mr. Angle? I'd like to see him. I wonder what five years in prison does to a kid like that. Yeah. Five o'clock that afternoon, it seemed we had run down every possible lead trying to find Joseph Harrison. By that time, the other two witnesses had made up their minds that he was the man they'd seen after all. With the four identifications, the case against Harrison became stronger, and our case against Elliot Champion grew weaker. It was imperative that we locate Harrison and prove or disprove that he started the fire. Yeah? Johnny Dollar. This is Mildred Champion. Remember in my uncle's office? Yeah, I remember. Mr. Dollar, you're looking for Joe Harrison, aren't you? I know you are. You don't have to answer me. And I think I can help you find him, but he's not the one you're looking for. I live at 1038 Murata Drive. I'll be home in another hour. We can talk there. At 530, I received another call. This one from Champion's lawyer. He advised me that Champion would bring suit if the claim was not honored immediately. Could have been a bluff or he could have meant business. We never found out. I had a third call at 5.38. Johnny, this is I. Hi. How's it going? Champion's dead. What? I'm on my way out of the house now. Somebody shot him ten minutes ago. Return to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Elliot Champion had died as swiftly as he had lived. A 38 slug had entered the very center of his forehead. There was no weapon lying about. There were no witnesses in the remote hilly section of Glendale where he lived to give any information concerning the crime. The police were more anxious than ever to find Joseph Harrison. 
Their reasoning was that if he'd burned down a quarter of a million dollar building to get back at Elliot Champion, he also might shoot him. The arson case had turned into a murder case. When Don Vickers joined Ives and me at the scene, things were still pretty much up in the air. Well, now this is a new wrinkle. What do you suppose... We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. I thought I was getting somewhere. You find something? I don't know. Take a look at this. Huh? Here. Mildred Champion married Harrison a month before he was convicted. Well, I'll be... Me too. Were they separated? Only by the prison term. No record of any divorce or annulment proceedings. Well, what do you make of it, Johnny? I don't know what to make of it. She called me earlier and said she had some information for me. I was on my way there when this happened. You didn't talk to her? No. She's his only living relative. And now she can't be found. Found at her place, anyhow. Funny, huh? It wasn't funny at all. From the two times I'd spoken to her and the one time I'd seen her, I'd gathered a pretty definite impression of Miller Champion. But apparently, it had been all wrong. see you anymore. What's up? Still looking for Joe? Still looking for Joe. Yeah, wish I could help you, Dollar. Elliot Champion was shot and killed in his home tonight. No. That's all you have to say? What else is there to say? Unless I ask, did Joe do it? Maybe. Well? Did you know Mildred Champion? I met her. Did you know she was married to Joe Harrison? Yeah. I'll throw one more thing at you, Angle. Champion wasn't always too good about paying his income taxes. Our accountants cover everything in a case like this. What do you want me to say? I'm here to get all of the story now. I think you're the man who can tell it. Why? You can tell me if Harrison was the kind of man who'd start that fire. You can tell me if he really was an embezzler. You can tell me if you think he'd kill Champion. I can't tell you anything, Dollar. All I have is my opinion. Well, I'd like your opinion. I really would, Angle. There's something about her being married to Harrison, isn't there? Yeah. A wife can't testify against her husband. Everyone else in Champion's office testified against him. I see. Now, uh, the opinion. Come on, Angle. Uh, you're right, Dollar. I've got ideas. And all of them make me sick inside. Joe Harrison stood there and told me he was innocent. He said it a million times if he said it once. And he told me he thought Champion was framing him. For the income tax shortages? Well, that's just surmise, Dollar. He was a green kid who was hired into the company by Champion. He might have been hired to be framed on a phony embezzling charge that would give Champion a good excuse on his taxes for a while. I've been fooled a lot of times. Were you fooled with him? I don't know. I wish I could have gotten him off. I tried, Dollar. Believe me, I tried. You say he's out getting even. He's burned down a building and maybe murdered a man. Joe was a nice boy, Dollar. But now his whole life's gone. And for what? I hope you don't find him. I hope nobody ever finds him. But we did find Joseph Harrison. He was right under our noses all the time. When I called back at the hotel, there was a message for me to get down to the county hospital. I was, was waiting for me there. We both stood and looked at Joseph Harrison in the morgue. It's a funny thing, Johnny. There's been an alarm out on this guy for six hours. Everybody's been looking everywhere for him, and he turns up right here. Only he's dead. What killed him? D.B., just got the whole story. He had it awful bad up at San Quentin. Wanted out awful bad. In the sick ward, his last two years. When his time was up last week, he made him release him. But he wound up here. Died in this hospital. Just a kid, huh? Yeah. Well, we were 
right back where we'd started from, trying to make a case against Elliot Champion. Except now it was trying to make a case against the estate of Elliot Champion. I was surprised to learn before leaving the county hospital that his niece had still not been seen to be informed of her uncle's death. I was even more surprised when Don Vickers reported from police headquarters... Johnny, this case is breaking. What? A guy who runs a gas station on San Fernando Road sold a woman a five-gallon tin of gasoline last Monday. Mildred Champion? Well, it sure sounds like her. Tall, rangy, about 30. The car description checks out, too. She could be the one who did the job on the building easy enough. Yeah. And on her uncle, too. Again? Yeah, come on. And close that and lock it. It's awful late for this. I know. Well, <clears throat> now what? We found Joe. He's dead. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And he didn't do any of the things we thought he might have done. I'm here to find out what you might have done. Oh, I don't get you. Angle, I don't know how to figure you. I haven't been able to since we met. Well, now, it doesn't make any difference what I think of you. But it makes a difference how you answer this question. A lot of difference to you. Well, what, Dollar? Did you help champion frame Joe Harrison? No. I told you I defended him. I tried my best to get him off. That's the truth? I'm an honest man, if not a successful one. I told you the truth. Well, if you did, you're not in any trouble. If you didn't, you might get killed. What? You might anyhow. I don't know what you're talking about. Ask who it is. Yeah. Who is it? Mildred Champion, Mr. Engel. Tell her just a minute. Just a minute, Miss Champion. Okay. Get over there. Go on. Get down. All right. Call the police. Hold it up, Mildred. Hold it up! Stole money from himself and made it look like Joe did it. I know about that. And that one in there, he helped him. Why didn't you let me kill him, too? He didn't help your uncle. He tried to help Joe. <laughs> when I went over to see Joe last month in the prison hospital, I knew he was dying. He had that look in his eye. Helpless. And he knew my wife, what my uncle had done to him, and he couldn't do anything about it. But you figured you could. You killed your uncle when you found out Joe died. You came here to kill Engel. I thought he... He helped him do it. I thought he helped kill Joe. They did kill him, you know. When they sent him to prison, as surely as if they'd shot him down. Five years I waited for him to get out of that awful place. I waited to hold him in my arms and tell him it was all over. Five years I waited to help him forget his hate and my hate. Loving him so much every day. And now he's dead. <laughs> what can you or I or anybody do about what they've done to him? Look at me, Mr. Dollar. I'm not what you'd call beautiful. I'm not even pretty. Nobody ever looked at me twice until Joe... He looked at me and he loved me and now he's dead and I'm dead inside. I'm dead inside and I'll be glad when I'm dead outside. <laughs> Come on, Mildred.
Expense account item six. Same as item three. Transportation back to New York. Item seven, same as item one. Transportation New York to Hartford. Item eight, $85 miscellaneous. Expense account total, $516.54. Comments. Item eight, you can take away if you want to. It's a legitimate miscellaneous that I pampered myself with. I wanted to forget Mildred Champion talking about her lover. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and is written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Eddie Marr, Joe Duval, Joyce McCluskey, Francis X. Bushman, and Herb Butterfield. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> This is Dan Coverley, inviting you to join us next week at this time when John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Tomorrow night at the Star's Address, look up Danny Clover, detective in New York City's teeming Times Square area. Danny, born and brought up in the shadow of the Great White Way, knows its haunts and its people as few others do. Tomorrow and every Saturday night on most of these same stations, follow Danny Clover on CBS Radio's Broadway Is My Beat. It's packed with thrills and human interest. Is your soldier boy coming home on furlough? You'll be glad to know Traveler's Aid is standing by to help him get home safe and sound. In bus, train, and airplane terminals, Traveler's Aid workers are constantly helping men and women in uniform, mothers with small children, all kinds of people. Traveler's Aid is really hometown insurance for people on the move. If you miss connections, get stranded in a strange town, or misplace directions, you can count on Traveler's Aid to help. Remember, your community chest gift supports Traveler's Aid and 159 other services. So give now to your community chest and give generously. And remember, America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS radio network. <laughs> <laughs>